If the Ender 3 is a 3D printer equivalent of a Volkswagen Golf, then the Anet ET4 is an Opel Astra. And after that, it's a level the Anet ET4 is an Ender 3 style 3D printer. It has the same 220 x 220 x 250 mm build volume, same style of extruder and hot end, same single Z axis screw, similar print performance, similar price, and with the same, but not actually that much better, but a lot more expensive, Pro model available further up in the lineup. However, the ET4 does not have the same cult following as the Ender 3, which means that if Anet wants to compete with Creality in the market, they have to deliver a more compelling package with more features or a similar performance at a better price. The latter of which they tried, but I think they wish we would just forget about it, just as much as Samsung wants us to forget about the Note 7. So to differentiate itself from the Ender 3 in a positive way, the ET4 has a color LCD touchscreen, a glass bed, an included auto bed leveling sensor, and a reverse bed leveling switch? Initially that might seem a bit weird because that's not what we're usually used to, typically with the Z alignment switch being at the bottom of the printer. But it actually makes sense, not only do you get more even wear and lubrication along the entire Z axis, but more importantly, the power resume that all 3D printers have would theoretically work a lot better. Since once you regain power to the system, it will not only be able to realign itself in X and Y, but also in Z. Basically, you would continue printing at the exact same height where you left off, even if the Z-axis moves during the power off state. In theory, this would be incredibly beneficial to recovering prints after a power loss. That is, in theory. Before I started filming, I tested this and it worked flawlessly. From some angles, you couldn't even see where I had cut the power. But as soon as I start filming, I couldn't for the life of me get it to restart a failed print. The machine just acted like, ah, everything's fine, everything normal, what do you want to print today? And it, uh, it's so annoying because Anet, you had something, you could have made a printer that you can just turn off when you go to bed and turn back on when you wake up in the morning and just continue a print. You could have been the printer for people who don't want to have a printer running while they're sleeping. Anet, with this reverse bed leveling switch, you had set yourself up to be a printer for a niche that exists and that would have bought your printer. But because it doesn't restart reliably, you cannot sell this printer for, to people who would use this functionality. You were so close. You were genuinely so close to making something really, really cool. Ah. Anyway. The ET4 has a glass bed, which gives the user a flatter and stiffer surface that, particularly at these small bed sizes, give the user a print bed with virtually no warping, which again results in it being even easier to level than the Ender Tree's aluminium-based bed. Which made it that much more peculiar to see that Anet found it necessary to include an auto bed leveling system with this printer. But not a traditional bed leveling system, but rather a membrane keyboard style button that you put on the tip of your nozzle like a sock. It makes sense on paper, but in practice, it can be difficult to install the sensor correctly. And because of that, you would get false readings that could do more harm than good. And to add insult to injury, the printer doesn't even remember the mesh bed leveling between restarts, making it a hassle to use on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, the distress I have towards this bed leveling system doesn't come from it being poorly implemented on a budget 3D printer, but rather how this is a sign of what's to come. The notion of us heading towards a more automated future, a future that is intended to be more safe but at the cost of being more boring and taking away control from the user, and by extension the necessity to understand how things work and thereby the ability to repair or even to improve things. Look at the ET5 Pro for instance. It's a newer printer and a straight upgrade to the ET4. And it does not have a z-axis end stop switch. It relies solely on the auto bed leveling sensor for leveling, but due to the software being buggy, it's a nightmare to get started, and frankly, printing on it becomes a chore. We're headed into the equivalent of the mid-90s auto industry, where every car manufacturer throws computers and electronics at their cars with the intent of making them better, but failing to realize that the technology just wasn't there yet, 
And what we're left with is a decade of cars that are unreliable and get scrapped not due to some huge mechanical failures, but rather small electric gremlins that are just not feasible to get fixed anymore. In short, leveling the bed on this printer is not an issue. But auto bed leveling feels more like it was intended to just be a check mark on a comparison page rather than an actually useful feature. Also, while we're on the subject of things that should be there, what is this ANAT? Come on, know your audience. We are tinkerers. We know how a hinge works. This doesn't accomplish anything, it just makes the printer look stupid. Anyways, the ET4 tries to be the printer that can do it all, but it tries to do that on a budget that doesn't allow it to do the things it says it does. And what you end up with is a printer that promises a lot, but ultimately falls short and would have been better off if it would have just stuck to the things that it can and would have rather spent the time and effort towards making those already existing features more polished and better. You see, the ET4 is a looker. I mean, look at it. It's bold red lipstick, stylish black dress, and that thick bottom end. Whew, it makes the ender tree look like an ugly duckling. But as many things in life, it comes back to the saying, it's what on the inside that matters. And once those good looks start wearing off, the what ifs start kicking in. What if I'd spent more money? What if I had bought an ender tree? What if I had gotten something with better electronics? Or just build something myself from the ground up. Hell, maybe you never even wanted to buy this particular printer, but the pandemic and thereby resulting shortage of printers made you get it. And these thoughts of being suboptimal, lesser, not what you truly wanted or desired, just keeps us seeing the negatives rather than focusing on what's present. Because at the end of the day, despite all, when you're printing on an ET4, you shouldn't be focusing on the printer and its flaws but rather everything you can create with it and all the opportunities that it enables. Because something is infinitely better than nothing. And the next step up in performance is neglectable in the grand scheme of things. Hi, I'm Sunshine, and thank you for watching this video that was strongly influenced by regular car reviews. If you don't know regular car reviews, they're a great YouTube channel that make excellent reviews that even non-car people will enjoy. I'll leave a link in the description of one of my favorite videos. Otherwise, as you probably noticed, I also introduced and released the print-in-place V-twin engine. I already made a video on how these print-in-place engines are made, so feel free to go check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, thank you to my Patreon supporters, thank you all for watching, and bye! <laughs>